Now, this is for reversible processes. Now, how can you use this to solve problems? Well, we, we do have one difficulty here, which is that if you think about it, this will really only work when the temperature is constant. Because if the temperature wasn't constant, you wouldn't know what T to plug in. This only makes sense if there's only a single temperature. Yeah. However, you will do, need to deal with some situations when the temperature is changing. So how can we deal with that? Well, this is the first time in the class where you're going to break out a little bit of calculus. Um, even though cal so calculus is a prerequisite for this class, but they don't use much in the first semester. Uh, but they're going to start introducing a little bit of it right now. And you'll, you'll see a lot more of this trick next semester when you deal with electricity. So we'll just see a little bit of how we can deal with the changing temperature here. Well, the trick in calculus is to focus on a very small interval. So instead of adding the heat all at once, let's just add a very small amount of heat. Well, in calculus, we would say that a very small amount of heat is indicated with D. So we're going to add a small amount of heat, DQ. And since we're adding only a small amount of heat, the temperature will only change by a, by a very small amount. So we can approximate it as constant. So we'll add a very small amount of heat, so the temperature will be almost constant. And then we'll add another very small amount of heat, and again, the temperature will be almost constant. Then another very small amount of heat, and the temperature will be a new number that's almost constant. And then what we do is we take the limit and add all those things up. If we add up all those small amount, uh, the effect of all those small amounts of heat and take the limit where the intervals uh, become very, very small, that should tell us exactly what the change in entropy is going to be. So this is the formula we would use for changing temperature. This is a trick that you're actually going to see much more next semester, where again, you'll be given a formula that works when a variable is constant, and then you'll see how to use calculus to generalize it or when the variable is not constant by focusing on small intervals. And again, both of these apply to reversible processes. Uh, we talked about that a little bit last time. Roughly speaking, a reversible process is one that you could uh, just as well imagine going in the opposite direction. It's something that could, you can easily imagine reversing itself. By the way, according to this formula, what should be the units for delta S? Um, units for Q are there on Remember that Q is for Kelvin? Or I actually I don't remember what Q. Remember that Q heat is basically a form of energy transfer. Heat is a form of energy transfer. Do you remember what the units are for energy? Those would be joules. So it's joules per Kelvin, right? Ah, that's right. So yeah. the units for Q would be joules, and then if you put it over the temperature, that would be joules per Kelvin. Okay. That's right. It's always good to know the units for each new concept. Yeah. So the units for this concept are going to be joules per Kelvin. Now, how can we find the entropy change for an irreversible, uh, irreversible process? Well, we can't just use these formulas because they're for reversible processes, but we can use the trick that we talked about before, uh, the fact that S is a state function. So if we're trying to figure out delta S for an irreversible process, we should compare it to a reversible process with the same starting and ending point. Just find a reversible process with the same starting and ending point, then you can, you can find its delta S using these formulas, and that'll be the same as the delta S for the irreversible process. So it's the delta S slightly subtle uh, way to think about this. We can't directly find the delta S for the irreversible process because these formulas don't apply. But we, uh, we can simply look for a reversible process that has the same initial and final points as the process we care about. Uh, we can use these formulas for the reversible process, and then that same delta S would tell you the delta S for the irreversible process. 
So what are some of the, the situations that you might see on exams where this might be tested? Well, one common thing is phase changes. They might ask you, what's the entropy change for a phase change? Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's work out how we would figure that out. Well, first of all, is a phase change reversible or irreversible? No, I'm not quite 100% sure about that myself. It's certainly true that you can either, um, th those are the flat portions of the heating curve. So you can go in either direction. For example, let's say that you have ice and steam that are in the same environment. Well, we would expect that one thing that's going to happen is that the steam is going to condense to liquid. Now, I guess in this case, that wouldn't really be an irreversible process because you couldn't imagine in this position that um, the, the liquid would go into the steam. It's going to try to get closer to the ice. But the trick that we go through is we can compare this to a reversible process. We can imagine, suppose that the steam, instead of being in contact with the ice, was in contact with water at, say, 99 degrees Celsius. Let's say, suppose it's in contact with water that's almost the same temperature as the steam. Well, in that case, it's almost in equilibrium, and with only a slight change in conditions, you could go in either direction. So we can think of it um, as, we can think of a, rever a reversible process in which the phase is going to change. So let's think about using one of these two formulas here. Now, are we going to have a constant temperature or a changing temperature situation? constant temperature because phases don't change when you're changing the temperature. We saw that when we talked about heating curves. So we can use this formula if we can just figure out Q. We know what the temperature is going to be because that's going to be the boiling point. Um, how, how would we figure out the Q for that case? Um, Q equals Good. It's good that you remember that formula. So we know that for phase changes, we use this formula for the mass times the heat of transformation. All right. Well, there you go. That's a common type of problem when you're trying to figure out the entropy change for a phase change. The entropy change for the phase change, you use this formula because the temperature is constant, and you can figure out the Q using this formula. when the temperature is changing. That's another top common type of problem. Well, let's say that we put together water at 80 degrees Celsius and water at 30 degrees Celsius. We know that uh, what's going to happen over time is that these two temperatures are going to move towards each other. Some of the water will cool and some of the water will heat up. Now, again, we have a problem because this is not really a reversible process. That is, what we're going to see here is that the two temperatures are going to move closer to each other, but we would not expect the two temperatures to uh, spontaneously move further apart from each other. Once they have the same temperature, they're not suddenly going to go back to 30 and 80. So technically speaking, this is an irreversible process. That's not going to make too much difference to us again, because we can imagine a reversible process that has the same starting and ending point. For example, we can imagine at the beginning bringing in an outside heat reservoir that's only a little bit, uh, that's almost the same temperature as this, and taking the temperature down very slightly. And then bring another outside heat reservoir that takes the temperature down a little bit more. And then bring in another outside heat reservoir that brings down the temperature just very slightly again. Uh, and because each of those heat reservoirs would be almost the same temperature as this, those processes would be almost reversible. And then we could bring in another heat reservoir that raises this temperature slightly, and another one that raises it slightly again, until these two temperatures are the same. So we can imagine a reversible process that would also get us to the common temperature. Anyway, that's a whole long argument to say that we're still going to use these two formulas. We can still think of, uh, be imagining this as happening in a reversible process. Now we have uh, a problem, though, because this formula doesn't seem to apply. Obviously, the whole point here is that the temperature is changing. So how can you use this temperature over here? Well, there's two approaches. One thing is you can just do an approximation. You can say, well, the temperature is changing, but it's not changing very much. After all, remember that these, um, if you think about these in Kelvins, 
the temperature change is not really very big. This is like, uh, what, 303 degrees Kelvin, and this would be 353 degrees Kelvin. So in these terms, the temperature change is not that big. So you might simply plug in the average or middle temperature. So the approximate approach is to plug in a middle temperature and get the uh, for a T. How would we figure out the Q? Um, you would add the two uh, Q values like if they're in. Let's um, suppose that we're trying to figure out first of all just the entropy change for this water, okay. and then we'll figure out the entropy change for this water, and then we can put them together. How would we figure out the, the heat value for this? What's the formula that would be applicable there? Uh, Q equals MC delta T. That's right. So we have to know what the change in temperature is going to be. Mm 